today's case is a prime example that evil exists in this world and that evil comes in many forms. Sometimes it's the very people who you think you can trust most who harbor the darkest, most disturbing secrets. And when those secrets come out, it can be devastating for everyone who once trusted them. But before we get into today's case, I want to let you guys in on a delicious little treat that I've been loving for every day, and that is Groons. Groons is a convenient, portable, fun way to get your daily nutrition in. Don't worry about those messy powders, you can get your nutrients from a pack of gummies. Most multivitamins contain only 7-9 to nine vitamins, whereas Groons has 20 plus vitamins and minerals and 60 plus whole food ingredients. Groons is so much more comprehensive and accurately dosed than your current nutrition solution. The vitamins are at 100% and the minerals are at 25%, which is the safe and effective amount. Not every vitamin or green powder puts in the care to dose ingredients effectively. With Groons, you get eight gummies in each daily snack pack because you truly can't fit the amount of nutrients they do into just one gummy. Plus, they literally taste like fruit snacks, so getting a whole pack makes it a fun treat to start your day. They're made with no artificial flavors or colors. They're made without gelatin, so they're vegan. They're also nut-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. They only have three grams of added sugar per serving, or you can choose a sugar-free option. With Grooms, you can enjoy all sorts of health benefits, including improving your gut health, more energy, immunity and recovery, and improved cognition. They're made with six times the gut health ingredients compared to the leading green powders. They contain mushrooms, which can help lower the chance of mild cognitive impairments, such as brain fog. Then the vitamin C reduces immunity damaging, stress inducing free radicals to help boost immunity. I trust Grooms to give me what I need in a day to keep me healthy, active, and strong. Right now, Groons is offering a discount to viewers of this channel. You can get up to 45% off your order just by clicking the link in the description box below. Once again, head to the link down below to get 45% off of your order with Groons. Thanks again so much to Groons for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the devastating case of Benson Xiong. Benson Xiong, born July 31st, 2018, was the youngest child born to parents Heather Gardner and Jamie Xiong. He had an older brother named Jathan, and the family lived in Wausau, Wisconsin. He only spent two short months on this earth before his life was taken from him. However, he was known to be a very easy, joyful, happy baby. He loved to be held and going for car rides. This was when he was his happiest. He always smiled, especially when you tickled his little chin. In his short time, he touched the lives of everyone around him. Now, both of Benson's parents were working while also raising their two sons. For a while, Heather was able to leave her children with her mother while she worked. However, Heather's mother would ultimately move to California, so she was no longer able to help with childcare. At that point, Benson was only around a month old, and Heather desperately needed help with caring for the kids, so she started looking for a babysitter. She started asking around until one coworker introduced her to then 28 year old Marissa Tsort. Right off the bat, Marissa and Heather hit it off. Marissa had children of her own, and the two were from the same hometown, so they had that in common. Plus, she was recommended to her by a co-worker she trusted, so Marissa seemed like a great fit. After meeting, Heather entrusted Marissa with the care of her two young children. Things seemed to be going very well initially. However, after around two weeks of Marissa watching Benson, Heather noticed some red flags. At first, she noticed a small scratch on Benson's mouth. She wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but it worried her enough that she took him to the ER. At that time, Heather expressed to his doctors that she was worried that he was being abused by his babysitter. She didn't know how an injury like that could happen by accident. But her doctors reassured her, telling her not to worry. They didn't think Benson showed any signs of abuse. He was just fine. Heather was relieved to hear this, thinking that she must have just been overreacting. After this visit, she allowed Marissa to continue babysitting her two children. 
There is no way she could have possibly known that this decision is what would ultimately lead to the tragic, heartbreaking demise of her precious two-month-old baby boy. By around 3.34 p.m. on the afternoon of October 18th, 2018, Heather dropped Benson and Jathan off at Marissa's house. At the time, Marissa was home alone with her own infant son, so no other adults were in the home. Benson was happy and alert, as he usually was. Heather went about her workday before returning to Marissa's house with her sister at around 9.20 p.m. to pick the boys back up. When Marissa handed Benson off to Heather, he was in his car seat, sleeping, with a hat pulled down over his eyes. Once she picked up the boys, they all headed over to the local laundromat. The laundry had just been piling up by that point, so Heather desperately needed to get it done, and her sister was with her to help her with everything. Once they arrived, Heather started unpacking the car to get everything ready. She grabbed Benson's car seat along with all the laundry and went inside. Heather sat Benson's car seat on a table while the two women started their laundry. After things were in the wash, Heather went to check on Benson. She started picking him up out of his car seat to hold him, but immediately when she touched him, she could tell that something was off. She could feel that his hips were kind of stuck together. Then, once she fully lifted him out of the seat, she noticed that his legs were rigid and his knees were stuck in a bent position. Obviously, this was very unusual and concerning, so she unzipped the snowsuit he was wearing, only to find that Benson's body was completely hard to the touch. After removing the hat and his clothing, she now noticed that Benson's skin looked pale, his lips were blue, and he was cold to the touch. Immediately, Heather lied Benson down on the table and began CPR as her sister grabbed the phone to dial 911. This entire situation was caught on surveillance video at the laundromat. On that video, it showed Heather desperately trying CPR while her sister spoke with the dispatcher. She continued CPR until first responders arrived and took over. However, despite their desperate efforts to save this baby's life, there wasn't anything else they could do. Baby Benson didn't have a pulse, and he wasn't breathing. He was dead, and it appeared that he had been dead for quite some time before Heather picked him up based on the state of lividity baby Benson was in. Of course, Heather knew exactly who was responsible for her baby's death. It physically couldn't have been anyone else except his babysitter, Marissa. By 9.50 p.m., Heather's sister texted Marissa saying, you killed my sister's effing baby. After trying to save Benson's life but realizing he was dead, Heather started telling first responders about this babysitter. She told them that her two children were with Marissa for the prior five and a half hours before she picked them back up. Based on this, police immediately knew that they needed to go out and find Marissa. They first checked to see if she was home, but she wasn't. She fled. From there, it took several hours for police to track Marissa down, but by 4.15 a.m. on October 19th, police finally tracked her down to the Plaza Hotel in Wausau. There, she had been with her boyfriend and her son. When police first arrived, it was very early in the morning, so when they knocked, her boyfriend answered the door. They told him to wake Marissa up, who then came out into the hallway to speak with officers. When they first asked her what happened, Marissa tried telling officers that she had no idea Benson was dead. But officers told her that she had to have known because Heather's sister texted her hours earlier telling her that the baby was dead. Marissa responded that she hadn't seen the text because her phone was dead. However, officers knew that this also wasn't true because they used her cell phone to track her to that hotel. They wouldn't have been able to track her if her phone was turned off. So, right off the bat, law enforcement knew that Marissa was not being truthful with them. After this, police conducted several more interviews with Marissa. Over the course of these interviews, which took over multiple weeks, her story changed multiple times. She repeated over and over and over that she didn't know the baby was dead. After numerous interrogations, though, police knew that something was off. They knew that at the very least, this baby died under her care, whether it was purposeful or accidental. So, officers did ultimately detain Marissa and took her into the station for further questioning. Finally, some time after being arrested, she admitted that she had known he was dead. 
Marissa explained that she watched Benson and his older brother that afternoon. When he was first dropped off, it was just herself and her infant son in that home, no other adults. However, by around 6.30 p.m., Marissa's boyfriend returned home. Marissa admitted that before her boyfriend got home, she knew that Benson had died. She said that she didn't kill him, but she knew he was dead because he felt cold. She didn't check for a pulse. She didn't try any resuscitation efforts, and she didn't reach out to anyone for help. After finding this dead baby, she put his lifeless body on the floor, grabbed a snowsuit from his car seat, and dressed him in that snowsuit before putting him back in the car seat. She then put a hat over his head and pulled it down in front of his eyes so you couldn't see the color of his skin. She then buckled him in and covered him with more blankets so that nobody could tell he was dead. By the time her boyfriend came back home, she took Benson's car seat and buckled him in the car. Then her own son, Benson, Benson's brother, and her boyfriend all headed to McDonald's. There, they all went inside, and Marissa placed her infant son's car seat on the table alongside Benson's car seat. They all ordered their food, then ate alongside Benson's dead body. They stayed there for around 15 minutes with Marissa chatting up the workers and laughing. She was having a great time considering the fact that there was a dead body on the table next to her. After eating, they all returned back home. A short time later, Heather came to pick up the boys. When handing Benson over to Heather, Marissa admitted that she purposely did not mention that he was dead because she obviously didn't want her to know. She allowed Heather to unknowingly bring her dead son with her to that laundromat. After Heather left with her children, Marissa, her son, and her boyfriend all went to the hotel to go swimming. At this point, Marissa continued to deny that she killed Benson. Again, she admitted that he did die under her care, but said that she wasn't actually the one who killed him. She just saw that he was dead, did nothing to try and bring him back, and didn't bother to call for help. She just noticed a dead baby and decided to cover it up and give him back to his mom. However, as this part of the investigation was ongoing, baby Benson's body had been sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy, and there, they got pretty much all of the answers they needed about the horrific death this two-month-old baby suffered. Turns out, Benson died as a result of blunt force injuries to his head resulting from multiple impacts. His tailbone was also fractured, broken off, and displaced, which indicated that a significant amount of pressure was used when this blow was landed. No matter what Marissa tried to claim now, investigators knew clear as day that she had beaten this baby to death. After learning of the autopsy report, then 28-year-old Marissa Tietzor was arrested and charged with the murder of two-month-old Benson Xiong. At this point, obviously, you might be wondering what really happened, how this woman could have taken this two-month-old precious baby who doesn't even belong to her and abuse him to death. Well, as it turns out, Marissa has quite the history of this same type of behavior. Dating back several years before Benson's death, Marissa had a long criminal record including drug offenses and child abuse. The incidents I'm about to tell you about paint a clear picture of someone who never should have had children of her own, let alone been able to watch other people's kids. She clearly only cares about herself. And honestly, she hates kids, so why she decided to be a babysitter, I'll never know. Starting back in June of 2010, Marissa's then-boyfriend and the father of her youngest children reported Marissa for child abuse and requested a restraining order. In this incident, which took place on June 4th, Marissa's boyfriend said that he was at work while Marissa was at home. Well, when he stopped back at home from work during his lunch break, he saw that his then one-year-old son was sitting outside in the hot car. He was clearly overheating with his little face looking beet red and he was all sweaty. He tried bringing the boy inside to cool him down, but Marissa wouldn't let either of them inside. Instead, she slapped her boyfriend in the face right in front of their child trying to get him to leave. Then, a few days after this incident, Marissa left her son in the car again in the middle of a rainstorm so that she could go out and party with friends. Once the father found out, he came and got his son, but Marissa wouldn't give him the baby's food or food stamps to go buy it for him. 
As a result of these accusations, a six-month-long temporary restraining order was granted, meaning that Marissa couldn't be in contact with her baby or her baby's father. Also, as a result of the order, Marissa was told that she was not allowed to own firearms. However, at this time, no actual child abuse charges were filed against Marissa. Just under three years after this first incident in November of 2013, Marissa was charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. She pleaded no contest and was found guilty. In January of 2014, she was charged with receiving and concealing stolen property worth at least $2,500, as well as for skipping bail. Once again, she pleaded no contest and was found guilty of possessing stolen property. Seven months later, in 2014, she was charged with possession of a controlled substance and bail jumping. However, the possession charges were ultimately dismissed, though she pleaded no contest to bail jumping and was found guilty. After that, over the course of the following six months, she faced several more charges, including driving without a license, multiple more counts of bail jumping, and obstructing an officer. By August of 2015, she was also found guilty of petty theft. Two years later, we see Marissa facing some more serious accusations relating to how she treated children under her care. By June 7, 2017, a mother dropped off her three-month-old baby boy and his three-year-old older sister at Marissa's home for her to babysit them. Marissa had been an old friend of this woman's and the kid's normal babysitter wasn't available that day, so Marissa offered to help. They stayed with Marissa for around six hours before their mother picked them up. The following day, by June 8th, the parents noticed that there was bruising and swelling around this baby's eyes, a bump on the side of his head, as well as bruising all around his mouth and finger, so they rushed him to the hospital. There, it was found that not only did this baby suffer multiple injuries, but he also had a skull fracture. Obviously, these parents were just devastated and furious about the situation, but Marissa made it seem like an accident. She told them that as she was feeding the baby, the baby's older sister was jumping on the couch next to them when she fell and sort of landed on them and knocked the bottle out of Marissa's hand, causing the bottle to slip and hit the baby in the face. She said it kind of like smushed the baby in the face. Marissa wasn't too worried about it though when it happened because she said the baby hardly even cried. She really didn't think it hurt him that badly. But at the hospital, doctors determined that these injuries did not align with that story. They actually stated that the injuries were not from one isolated event. They were from multiple incidents. Of course, an investigation was done into the incident and as part of the investigation, officers interviewed that three-year-old girl. She basically told officers that she never saw Marissa hit that baby. She did say that the bottle slipped out of her hand and hit the baby at one point, so that sort of corroborated that part of the story. Police also interviewed Marissa's then-boyfriend, who wasn't home at the time of the incident, but also said that he never saw Marissa hit or abuse that baby. He did say that when he got home from work, the baby's eyes were red and puffy, but it was nothing too crazy. He never actually saw her abuse that baby at any point. Now, even though doctors determined that the injuries were most likely caused within the time frame in which the baby was at Marissa's home, police said that they didn't have enough evidence to charge Marissa with anything. So, at this time, she was let go and no further action was taken. A year later, on August 2nd, 2018, just about a month before baby Benson's death, an 11-month-old baby girl was dropped off with Marissa for her to babysit. According to this baby's parents, Marissa had been regularly watching this baby and the baby's older sister for about a year. But this time, on August 2nd, Marissa was only watching the 11-month-old baby and not her older sibling. This was the first time the baby was under Marissa's care without her sister. When her parents picked her up that day, they noticed marks and abrasions all over the baby's face. The baby's father said that it looked like she had been dragged across the floor. From there, an investigation was done, and Marissa told police that she had laid the 11-month-old and her own infant son down on opposite ends of the couch for them to take a nap. She went into the other room to clean and do dishes when she suddenly heard the girl screaming. When she went to check on her, she was face down on the carpet next to the couch. 
Somehow, this baby had fallen off the couch and landed directly on her face. In the interview with police, they actually asked Marissa if she had ever been questioned in a child abuse case before, and she said no. Police confronted her about that two-month-old baby boy who had the skull fracture, and she admitted that she was questioned about it, but she said that she had nothing to do with that injury. Now, when that 11-month-old baby was taken to the hospital, Marissa gave the same story about her falling off the couch. However, doctors found that her injuries were not consistent with a fall off the couch. They couldn't say exactly what caused them, but they knew that they weren't caused from a fall off the couch. During this investigation, police informed Marissa that they were going to be removing her then three-month-old child out of her care. I want to note that at some point before this, all four of her other children had been removed from her care due to both Marissa and the father of these children doing drugs, but I guess social services didn't know that she even had this fifth child until this investigation. After multiple incidents of child abuse, Marissa Tietzort is being charged, but for the parents of the child that she's reportedly harmed, the damage is still very real. After she did hurt her, I couldn't leave my house for about a good two weeks because of the bruising on her face. Megan Royce and Dylan Baum had previously known Tietzort for over a year, before allowing her to watch their children. I had used Marissa for two weeks as a babysitter, and I never once thought to see cap her or look her up because she was a friend of a friend, and she had a baby as well, so I figured it was safe. After she talked to police, Megan Roy started receiving threatening messages from other people who blamed her for the attack. It was hard because I had to tell people that my babysitter had done it. I'd been getting messages that People think I could have prevented it when I was just trying to help my daughter's case and make sure she did get put away and she did get charged for what she did. Even after the charges, Teet Sort still hasn't admitted to anything. And it hurts because she keeps lying about it and she's not once told me the truth about what happened to Riley. The message that Megan and Dylan have for the parents looking into babysitters, you can't be too careful about the people that watch your children. Look them up. See if anything pops up for, for uh, child abuse, child neglect, anything like that. Even if you've, if you've known them for over a year like we did, yep. even if you've known them for that long, they're still being left alone with your child now. And I never would have thought to ever really do it before until now. You wouldn't think it. A month after this incident, by October 11th, Marissa was actually charged with child abuse. She was given a summons to appear in court on November 1st, but she was not arrested immediately after these charges were filed. A week after Marissa was charged with child abuse by October 18th, 2018, Benson and his older brother would be dropped off into her care one last time. We would later find out that while Benson and Jathan were under her care that day, Marissa actually texted Heather, telling her that her name and picture were popping up in articles online, saying that she was being charged with child abuse. She said that she wasn't allowed to be in contact with children, but asked that she not tell anyone that she was caring for her children. This text was sent two hours before Heather picked the boys up, However, Heather later said that she hadn't seen the text right away, and as soon as she read it, she went to pick the boys up. When she was handed Benson in that car carrier, she didn't think anything of it because he looked like he was sleeping and it was nighttime. It was around the time that he would have been sleeping anyways. After finding out all of this information, obviously, baby Benson's parents were just devastated. They had no idea that Marissa's five children were removed from her care. They had no idea that she had this past history with drugs, and they definitely weren't aware that she was being accused of child abuse all this time. The investigation into Benson's death took a few months before Marissa was actually charged. As I stated, they had to await the autopsy results to figure out exactly how he died, and that did take some time. But finally, by January 4th, 2019, Marissa was charged with the first-degree intentional homicide for two-month-old Benson Chiang's death. We were able to issue charges today and um, start the process, and uh, we were glad for the victim's family that we could move forward.
I want to note that over the course of interviews and the investigation, Marissa never actually said what happened to the baby, but in one interview, she did admit that she got frustrated with Benson and threw him into a playpen. I do think there is truth to that, and I think that's probably what caused some of his injuries. A baby that young is so, so vulnerable and fragile. Throwing a baby like that is going to cause some significant damage to their tiny little bodies. However, we do know that he had multiple blunt force injuries to his body, so although I do think she probably threw him in that playpen, I absolutely think there is more to the story. For the months that followed, Marissa sat in jail awaiting her trial. Her bond was set to $500,000, which obviously she did not post. She did request a bond reduction, even writing a letter to the judge with her reasons for why. This letter stated in part, like, really, I'm not a monster or whatever. I love kids. I'm a mom with five plus kids. I'm pregnant now with my sixth kid. I'm five months pregnant and I'm not getting the food or medical treatment I need for my unborn baby. Want to see if I can get an ankle bracelet until I can get an attorney. I'm not a bad person or anything. This letter is just wild to me saying, well, I'm not a bad person, so let me out even though I murdered this two-month-old defenseless infant. This was denied, of course, so she waited in jail for the years that followed. But then, by March of 2022, Marissa actually pleaded no contest to her charges of child abuse for that 11-month-old girl and to amended charges of first-degree reckless homicide. Basically, the difference between the first-degree intentional homicide and reckless homicide is that Marissa did something to cause that baby's death, such as beating him or throwing him without necessarily intending on murdering the baby. It's really just the result of her actions that caused his death. That's pretty much the difference between the intentional and reckless homicide. As a result of her no contest plea, she was found guilty of her charges. At her sentencing hearing, the judge talked about just how horrific of a crime these charges are. She went after the most vulnerable, defenseless populations possible. Not only that, but when she did hurt these babies, they couldn't even tell anyone what happened to them. That is something only the most sick, vile monsters can do. Marissa truly is just that a monster. For these charges, Marissa was sentenced to 40 years behind bars for the murder and three years behind bars for the child abuse charges. Both sentences are to run concurrently. After she's released in 40 years, the judge ordered an extended 20-year supervision. So, that is all of the information we have on today's case. Obviously, this is a horrific case that I will never even begin to understand. This woman clearly hates children and doesn't have the patience to be around them, yet she went out of her way to watch other people's children. It doesn't make sense whatsoever, but that being said, it makes me think that she just hates kids in general and enjoys watching them suffer. I don't know how else to explain her actions. Most people who know they have a low temperament around kids or people who just don't get along well with kids will just avoid them. They won't go out of their way to babysit them. Yet, Marissa, she did. She wanted those kids under her care. And to me, I think it was because they were easy targets for her. Whatever pent-up rage she has, whatever is going wrong in her life, she took it out on the most innocent, defenseless population possible. I truly hope she suffers every single day she spends behind bars. She deserves nothing more. My heart truly aches for the parents of Baby Benson who suffered the most unimaginable loss possible. I know they still post about his case on their Facebook page called Justice for Benson Chiang, so if you want to check that out, it will be listed down below. But with that being said, that is where I'm going to end today's video, and now I want to hear what you all think. Why do you think this happened? Do you think Marissa intentionally killed Benson? Or do you think she abused him to death? What do you think of these other cases of children being abused under her care? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Don't forget to use the link down below and head to Groons for 45% off of your order. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. All will be linked down below. 
And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.